waiting at the moment. Remember, the transfer window is not shut yet. That's all I'm going to say. Well, the transfer window for us has been completely non-existent. And we've been linked with all these huge world stars, absolutely none of whom have we signed yet. And this has been the pattern for the last four or five years of transfer windows. In fact, the only thing that's different to most of them is that we haven't sold a world-class player. We haven't sold our club captain. But that's because nobody wants Vermaelen. So, it's, yeah, uh, no, but it's, remember, he's got rid of a lot to, of players. He's not silly. He's, he, he's got a thin he's squad. He's not silly, but he's not, I think that even the most diehard Wenger fan would have to concede that Arsene Wenger is not the manager that he was eight years ago. And, you know, you can't go eight years without winning a single trophy or even coming close to one and not expect to be criticised and to be held to account. I just find one of the problems with Arsenal at the moment is that I think Wenger thinks he has a job for life, and there are too many Arsenal fans that are quite happy to let us carry on sliding into mediocrity um, and quite happy for Wenger to carry on being manager for the rest of his life. Well, the real world doesn't work like that. No, but but this year he does have the money. I have said in the podcast that I'm on the fence. If he doesn't spend this year, he is gone next season. That is it for me. I don't know where he's going to spend it now. We've got, what, I mean, three days until the first game. And then we have about two weeks left of the window. I mean, I just think the opportunities to buy world-class players. You know, it, it, this comes back to what happened after David Dean left the club. I think that all our transfer business since the day he walked out or was thrown out um, has been a disaster. You know, we, we either panic buy on the last day of the window, spending a fortune. This idea that Wenger doesn't spend lots of money. Look at what he spent on you know, 10 million Mertesacker, 10 million on Juru, 10 million on Podolski, 10 million, 11 million on Jovino, 6 million on Andre Santos, one of the worst defenders we've ever had. You start adding all this money up, this is a huge amount of money he's spent. He's just yeah, spent Piers, exactly. if you go back to Santos, he's not a defender, that's not fair on him. But what I would say as well, well is he this. Was, well, sorry, he was playing left back. Well, for us, yes. <laughs> you're left back. He was the he's worst. Not, Left back, I've never seen in my life. Well, <laughs> no, he's, he's more of a joker. He made me laugh. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think the point that I think the point that that perhaps you're missing here, Piers, is that there was obviously a plan in place, and and these eight trophyless years. I mean, I've been a season ticket holder for some twenty plus years. These yeah. years without a trophy are not by coincidence. Obviously, because they haven't had the money to spend. There was always but a plan in place. Wait, that's what I mean, though. I think that Arsenal fans have been completely conned into thinking this. Listen to the figures I just gave you about all those players. We spent tens and tens of millions on players. We just haven't bought very good players. They're all OK. You know, Podolsky and Giroud are OK, but combined, they're not anywhere near as dangerous as Van Persie. We sold, our best, we sold our best striker since Thierry Omri to Manchester United. I mean, you know, why the Arsenal fans weren't marching to the Emirates demanding uh, resignations after that, I have no idea. How can you possibly sell your club captain and best striker to your former number one rivals. Yeah, but hold on, Piers. First of all, they're not our rivals at the moment, which is a problem. They were. That's Se- they're not second our of all, if no one comes in for Robin Van Persie and he wants to leave, what do you do? Do you keep a player? I had this out when I spoke to Arsene. You can't keep a player that doesn't want to be there. You look at Luis Suarez. Actually, How's he ever going to play for Liverpool but again? He, he didn't want to leave Amanda. Actually, you, can, you can do exactly what Liverpool apparently are doing with Suarez, which is holding him to his contract, and that's it. You can we'll do that. Say, we'll say. Van Persie, we could, what we should have done with Van Persie was kept him to the final year of his contract and signed three world class players so that he could fulfil his own personal ambition of winning trophies. Instead we threw the towel in signed a bunch of mediocre players and Van Persie said that's it I'm off but then you don't sell him to any rival in the Premier League unless you are committing professional suicide and um, you know there's too many Arsenal fans who just accept it. No I I don't accept it. It's outrageous. But you, you can't keep a player that doesn't want to be there when he's got a year left on his contract. You can't wait. Yeah, you, you can keep him for one more year. You can. He, he, and then what, Lewis, 20 million? But he came out. Yeah, we've but, nearly lost uh, qualification for the Champions League. We still may not qualify for the Champions League. If we lose to Fenerbahce, by, uh, for, for example, we will lose the money that we would have from the Champions League, which is 25 million, which is a million more than we sold Van Persie for. But the maths just don't add up. You he, is. he was there yeah. the season before and we just qualified. I just think you do not sell your best player to Manchester United full stop. End. Okay, just so, 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 Piers, the question is, what is the answer and what do you do about it? And do you honestly believe that if 30,000 people marched on the Emirates, it would make any difference? Yes, honestly. I do. I do. I think the, the problem is that Wenger was so brilliant for the first eight years of his reign 
absolutely brilliant. One of the greatest managers in British football history. And I watched all those games. I was a season ticket holder throughout. I barely missed a game, actually, at Highbury and then Emirates. And those teams that he produced, the double-winning teams, were two of the best sides I've ever seen play for Arsenal. My issue is that that Wenger is not this Wenger. The type of players that he bought, the style of football that he played, was completely different. We used to go for these tall, powerful, skillful, aggressive footballers. And for the last four or five years, we've gone for small, lightweight not very aggressive footballers and every time we play any side with muscle like Chelsea or Bayern Munich or teams of that stature uh, we get bullied off the ball you know watching our defenders up against someone like Drogba was a total nightmare no it wouldn't have been in the days of the original Wenger defences oh, yeah, and and yeah. I think tactically in terms of his choice of players his transfer purchases and his general tactics. I think this is not the same Wenger. And it breaks my heart, and I'm sure it breaks every Arsenal fan's heart, but there comes a point when you have to stare reality in the face. And it's got nothing to do with whether you like Wenger personally. I think he's a terrific man. I just think that, unfortunately, I believe, I fear, he has run his course. And if we don't qualify for the Champions League, this season, which is highly likely, given our current inaction in the transfer market, um, given the strengthening at Man City, given Manchester United, I'm sure, will be as strong as ever. I think Spurs, if they get the bail money and buy four very good players with it, will be stronger than us as a squad. Uh, I think the other teams will also be stronger. Chelsea under Mourinho will do well. There is a very high likelihood we will not qualify for next year's Champions League. And I will blame Wenger and Gazidis. Piers, one, two things. First of all, you're talking about Highbury days, and I was there as well watching every game. Then we moved to a stadium that cost millions. I wish we were back at Highbury. So I do I. I miss, I, miss, I miss my East End Theatre Highbury, but we're not. We're at the Emirates. Stadium if you never win a thing again. Yes, and the atmosphere is not great. But my point is this. Abramovich walked in the door and changed the game. So he wasn't on the same level playing field, was he? We have, a, the richer money. Russian, we have a richer Russian oligarch than Abramovich who is desperate to get his hands on our team. And, and, he can't get, and, and he can't and he can't get a he can't get a car parking space in the Arsenal car park. That's no, and he's, he's, he's treated despicably in my view. But I think if we had him, Usmanov, and we had David Dean back, we would be a transforming club and we'd start winning things again. Until then, we have an American who doesn't seem to care very much. We have a South African in Gazidis who couldn't sell a bus ticket unless he's selling about Percy. Um, and we have in Wenger a, a coach who simply isn't as good as he used to be. And it adds up to mediocre misery. And there are Arsenal fans who don't agree with me who think that Wenger is still as great as he always was. I simply say this. Do you think that any manager at Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester United, Manchester City, or even Tottenham could go eight years without silverware and still be in their job? And the answer is absolutely not. Piers, the hell... I mean, you've mentioned there's, there's two different things here. You've got you've got Arsene, the, the the manager and, and the coach, and then we've got the, uh, the the board and the executives and the way that the club goes about its business. Do you think if those elements change, as you've just suggested, do you think with Arsene as manager we could get back to being successful, or do you well, think nothing, the whole, do you think the whole I, thing needs to change? I, I honestly think Wenger has run his course with us. And maybe he needs a new challenge. Maybe he needs to go to Paris Saint-Germain, back to his homeland, and, and create a whole new team for himself and maybe win trophies with them. I would love that to happen to him. He's earned that. He's earned respect and he's earned you know, success. The question becomes, do we look at what Arsene Wenger's done in the last five years in particular and think this is really the right guy to lead Arsenal going forward? I don't happen to think he is. And I think there are many better options. I look at someone like Klopp at Dortmund, and I think, I wish we had that guy. You know? um, and I think I look at Bayern Munich and the way they have transformed themselves in the last few years, and you think, we're nowhere near that level. Nowhere near it. Um, we could buy four players of world-class stature tomorrow and not be near Bayern Munich. So the idea, we're, we're not remotely competitive on the international stage in terms of European competition. And domestically, I think we're really, really struggling to come forth. And that's not good enough. It's just not good enough. So at what point do enough fans say enough? At the moment, I don't see enough of them. So I blame the fans who aren't calling for change. I think, you know, what, what are you waiting for? 
Well, Piers, you need to be on my timeline then. You need to follow me because <laughs> most of my people want Wenger out, to be honest. So I don't, And by the way, it's not because we hate Arsene Wenger. No, I love Arsene Wenger. And I, I would love to give him a fantastic send-off and a wonderful testimonial and thank him profusely for the amazing team that he gave us. But just be honest, when was the last time we felt we had a genuinely competitive team? Or we looked at the side that was playing in Arsenal colours and thought, wow, these guys are right up there with the two double winning teams. I can't think of a single player outside of Jack Wilshire who would have a chance of getting into either of Wenger's double winning teams. That is how far we have regressed. And it's, these are just facts, isn't it? You know, who would you put in that team? Who would you put in the Invincibles from this team? Other than possibly Wilshire? Nobody. That's probably a fair comment. It is fair, but we're not in the same playing field. We were at Highbury and Abramovich wasn't don't around. Believe, don't I believe don't. The, <laughs> the myth that he has spent tens of millions of pounds on mediocrity. His yes. ability to pick gold from the haystack has unfortunately dramatically changed. I think before he used to pick all these rough diamonds you know, from the French leagues and so on, but now everyone has scouts in these places. And we are constantly being outbid. Constantly being out of thought. We now apparently have this huge treasure trove. What is the point having it if you can't buy any players? Now, if in the next two weeks, Arsene Wenger changes the habit of a lifetime and spends big on players of the quality of Luis Suarez, then I would, as I've said on Twitter, I would give him another chance to say, great, you've finally done what you should have done for the last five years, what you should have done to keep players of the quality of Fabregas and Van Persie. You've finally done it. Let's see what happens now. Because someone like Suarez can win trophies on his own. If we don't get a Suarez class of player, then I really just don't see us doing anything other than coming fourth, probably fifth. So do I know, you I know, I know, that, sorry. I know there's, I know there's questions that Kate wants to ask you, but one last question whilst on that. How would you feel about Wayne Rooney coming to Arsenal? I would absolutely love Wayne Rooney. He's exactly the kind of player we need. Mm. He needs a new challenge. He's, he's fed up with this situation being second best to Van Persie. What better way to kick those United executives in the teeth than to steal their best striker until Van Persie arrived? And I think that it would be brilliant for us, brilliant for Rooney. But are we going to get him? I don't think so. And here's why. Manchester United would rather shoot themselves than sell us Wayne Rooney. Because they know they've strengthened our chances of competing against them. They wouldn't do it. They won't allow it. So it's a non-starter. In our case, Alex Ferguson just rang up Arsene Wenger and personally requested our club captain and best striker. And Wenger said, absolutely fine. Thanks, Alex. You can no, have he didn't, first. Piers. And you know That's he didn't. Happened. It that didn't. Because you've entered the room for him and that we had no choice. He would, they, yeah. I was told that they were the only ones in for him. And you're, missing, you're missing the point. Van Persie was under contract for one more year. We had an, absolutely, we had a choice. 